All right, welcome to week four. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is create a composite image. So this is going to be your composite image tutorial. Uh, now, when you go to do yours, uh, it might be different than mine because obviously you might have different, you're going to have different subjects, different backgrounds, so on and so forth. So, but hopefully this will give you enough of an idea of how to go about doing it, and you can apply it to your own thing. So. Uh, in essence, what you are going to need are at least a background image, um, which is what I have here. So um, this uh, is my background image. This is actually uh, in Cambridge. And then um, uh, and you're going to need images that you're going to posit into it. So this is just some photo from a zoo, from the zoo I visited. Uh, of an elephant, and this is my daughter when she was littler. Okay. Mine's going to be a little bit boring. What I would tell you, though, is, you know, try to do something that wouldn't actually exist, right? So, um, something more fantastic, like, uh, you know, have, like, sharks floating through the air, right? Like, in the mall, or, uh, I had one student that she had, uh, she, she, there was, like, a, a picture of a, a football guy, like, throwing a football up, like, spinning it. And she just replaced the football with a baby instead. It was fantastic. So, like, the baby was, like, just flying in the air. It was great. Um, but, you know, you could do all sorts of interesting things. But basically the idea is that you're going to need, you know, your, your main background, and then you're going to need the stuff that you're going to composite into that. All right? So that's what we have here. Uh, so you want to gather those together. Obviously, higher, higher the quality image, the, the better it's going to turn out. Um, you know, put them in a folder or something, and then uh, you can start. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my background and make that the, the main um, photo. So where you comp images? Um, actually, I'm just going to go ahead and open all three of them. All right, here they are. So um, the idea behind here, behind this, is I'm going to put the elephant obviously in here, and then I'm going to put my daughter on the elephant. Uh, I went to a Renaissance festival, and they were giving um, elephant rides, right? And I had my daughter. I'm like, oh, that'd be really cool. We should do that. And yeah, they had like the little thing on the elephant and they're like tugging him around and I was like I can't good conscience do that so uh she didn't get the elephant ride uh so I'm just gonna make it happen now via this that's that's my thought process okay so uh this is my background as per usual first thing we should do is um make a copy I'm not gonna change anything about this though so I'm not even gonna bother making a copy I'm just gonna leave it just like it is um because I'm not going to be doing anything. But if you're going to do any kind of healing brush or anything that's destructive, make a duplicate first. Then what I'm going to do is crop it. So I'm using my crop tool here. Make sure it's 9 by 6 or 6 by 9. And uh, I am pretty okay actually with that, that composition. That works for me. Okay, great. So there is that. All right, so now what I want to do is I'm going to bring in the elephant first and composite him in there. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to go to this image, Control A, Control C. And then control V. Yay, there's my elephant. Um, let's go ahead and make it a smart object. So I'm going to right click on it and convert to smart object because I'm going to try and do as much of this as I can as a um, uh, as non destructively as possible. So some of it I might end up doing some destructive things, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try not to. Okay. Because um, some of that I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can just liquefy it on a smart object, but we'll see what we can do. All right. So what I want to do with this is I need to cut out, right, all of the stuff around him, but uh, leave just the elephant. Now, um, the elephant in the room is I might not want to get rid of that. So one way of doing it, the, the obvious way, right, would be, imagine I just, I'm doing a good job, but I'm silly, I'm not, right? Um, I would, oh, so what's on? I thought I'd just switch to the regular. Control D, Shift L, L, there we go. Um, so imagine I just did a good job and I cut this perfectly and it's great. Okay. So what I can do is just delete everything out and just grab the elephant, right? But this is destructive. And let's say I accidentally, like right here, you see how I accidentally, the rest I did a great job with, right? But right here I accidentally cut into the head, right? I, I raced out basically the head there. Well, I can't get it back because it's gone. It's like sayonara. What we can do instead is something like this we can create a mask, okay? Now, when we did the, the previous assignment, we did those adjustment layers, and you remember that I showed you that it's actually like a white, uh, the whole, it's just a white layer that they're applying it with? 
that's what we're going to do, but we're not using an adjustment layer. We're just going to mask out a section. So what you do is you make a selection such as we have, right, through the various tools and stuff. We're going to cover how to do that better. And then down here where we had the adjustment layers and we did the effects, we didn't play around with masks yet. All you got to do is you click on this, and what it's going to do, hang on a second. I got to invert my selection here. I. All right. What it's going to do is it's going to create this image that's going to be your mask okay and so if you look you can see there's the picture and now the picture is tied to this other image and you can see it's black and white what's black is not shown what is white is and what we can do is i can click on this picture here and then use my brush to what am i on white um to paint in where i want so like let's say i missed it here and uh, if I paint white, and if I paint black on this image, I can, let's say, uh, you know, he didn't want to have a big trunk, but he's, he's uh, self-conscious about his nose. I can take stuff out, and all I'm actually doing is painting on this image. So just picture it that we're just basically drawing a frame that's going over top of it and allowing us to see through the part that we draw. So basically, that's a mask. And you can use that mask for all sorts of different cool things, um, such as even when we were doing the, um, the uh, adjustments and things like that. Those were all using masks. The only reason why I was affecting the whole image was because if you look, that picture that was next to it was completely white. It had the whole thing as white. But if we would have blacked out some of it or just painted white on some areas, then it would have only affected those specific areas. And that'll be helpful later on when you're doing other things. But this is much more non-destructive. And that's basically how we're going to composite these. Okay, I don't need this anymore. Get out of here. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, but what I need to do is I need to do a better job of selecting, okay? So uh, I'm going to use a couple different methods here just so that you can see how it works. Um, so I'm just going to zoom in, Control Plus, Control Plus. And what we're going to do is um, underneath this um, uh, wand tool here, there's Object Select, Quick Select, and Magic Wand, okay? Let's do object selection. Let's try this one out first. What you do is you just start at the top, draw a box that, that basically has the object that you're trying to grab, and then let go. And what it will do is, through its mind's eye, it will try to grab what it thinks that you're trying to grab. And I know you might be looking at this and go, oh, well, it messed up this trunk and stuff. That's still pretty impressive, right? That's still pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, it, it doesn't know what an elephant is, and yet it was able to figure out that that was what I wanted, all right? So that's not a bad way to start. Now what I'm going to do is uh, go from there one more level, okay? So we're going to start from the most broad to the more specific, all right? Just kind of like what we did when we did the heel brush, where I did like bigger, more automated things, and then we got more and more minute uh, tools. That's what we're going to do here. Okay, so there's that. Now, the next two ones underneath, as you'll see, are the Quick Selection Tool and the Magic Wand Tool, okay? So, they both, when you look at them initially, you're going to be like, they both do the same thing, okay? So, I'm actually going to undo that just so you can see this. So, I'm going to hit Control-D to clear my selection, select, deselect, the thing is doing that. And I'm going to show you how these work. So, the one here, <laughs> uh, Quick Selection Tool, what that does is this. Yeah. You'll see it has a little plus on the, on the, on the icon there. And what it does is as you click and draw, I, I'm clicking and I'm dragging, it will try to find an edge. So it'll like leak out until it finds an edge to stop at. So it's looking for edges. Now if I hold Alt, I'm sorry, Alt, um, it will do a minus. So I'll go like this and I can cut back. And you can kind of almost see it going like bleeding into it, okay? So that's how that one works, okay? I'm just gonna clear this out. The next one here is the magic wand. And what you do is you click, and you're gonna see it goes boop, like that, right? And you're like, okay, well that looks, seems like the same thing. This one's a little bit different. So for one, it has this tolerance value. And basically, the higher the tolerance, so like watch if I do like 100. Um, you can see it almost selected the same amount. <laughs> that was not a good example. Um, the higher the tolerance, the more it will select. 
the lower the tolerance, let's say I do one here, the, well, you can't even see it, but I don't know if you can see a little dot, the less it's going to select, okay? 32 is the default, you probably just leave it there for now. What this one is doing is it's not looking for an edge, where the one kind of is, is like bleeding until it hits an edge and then and then gets complete. So you can see like right here, right? There's clearly an edge. The computer can understand that. This one instead is doing it based off of a like pixels. So basically it's looking, when I click on this, it's looking around it and it's saying, okay, all of these pixels are the same color. And so it'll grab that strip of color based on this tolerance. So this is actually the oldest one. This quick selection is the newest one, and the object selection or is the second newest, and the object selection is the newest newest. Like they just came out with that like this year. Um this year, I think. Uh, somewhere around now. But anyway, um that's that's the way they work, okay? And different ones, depending on what you're trying to do, actually might work better than other ones. So it's kind of up to you which one you want to use. Um, I would say I would start with this one to get a rough idea. It should grab your subject. Um, it works pretty well, as you can tell. Um, and then you can minutely adjust it from there. Okay. So let's go ahead and we'll just, I just did the, the, the content selection, as that was called, uh, object selection tool. I just did that over it. Um, now what we're going to do is I'm just going to fix it. Okay. So if you look, you can see, um, it didn't do in here correctly. Uh, and it messed up some other stuff. Now I could next, let's just go ahead and do it. I'm going to do this quick selection tool. I'm going to hold alt, right? And so it undoes it. And I'm just going to click in here and click in there, kind of click and drag a little, and we'll click and drag a little here. It seems that the size also helps. Like if you make it smaller, see yeah, that went too far. And let's, oops, ah, went too far. Sorry, my mouse is sliding around. Okay. That's acceptable. So we're going to call that good um, with that, right? I'm not going to bother using the wand, but the wand kind of does a similar thing, but you probably don't want to use it. Anymore. All right. So we'll call that good. Obviously, there's other parts that it needs to go in here and stuff as well. So let's use the next set of tools. The next set. Um, so there's also, obviously, the marquee select, which just will select a box. Or if you hold it down, there's also elliptical or single row. You don't need it. But those aren't really going to help us that much with what we're doing here. Um, the other options are for the selection, besides these automated things up here, is um, the lasso. Okay, so lasso will just let you freehand draw it, but it's not very accurate. It doesn't work that great. Um, then there's the polygonal, which lets you click and draw like a bot, like a po polygonal around it, a, a polygon. And then the last one, which is the best one, is this magnetic lasso. And that will actually try to snap to an edge. So what I'm going to do is I kind of just want to add to my selection here, right? So the way it works, and we kind of used it a little bit before, is I'm going to click. Um, actually, i got to hold shift. Um, see how it's, when I'm in here, it, it thinks I want to add a new one. Uh, if I start doing it here, it's going to replace the one that I have. If I hit alt, it's going to try and take away. See the little minus symbol next to it? I don't know if you can see it. And if I hold shift, it's going to add to it. Same thing as clicking the buttons up here. This will only add to my selection, and this will only subtract from it. So I'm just going to leave it on this. I'm just going to hold shift. I'm going to click and I'm just going to drag as best as I can. And you can see it's not doing the greatest in there. And then I'm just going to click, click and double click. And you can see it's going to add to it here. Let's go down here and see if we get a better um, result. Again, I'm going to hold shift so that it doesn't start a new selection. It's just adding to this one. I'm going to click and just drag. And then when it gets has a harder time, you can see how these are really close. I'm just going to click manually. Click, click. Click, 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 click. And then here, there's an obvious edge, so we can figure it out. I'm going to click in here just in case. And we're going to drag up, right? And then I'll dub and double click. And now that will be added, okay? So that works pretty good. It didn't work that good here. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm just going to go ahead and use my polygonal lasso. And I'm just going to uh, hold shift again. You can just click this if you want so you don't have to hold shift. Uh, but I'm just going to hold shift. Click, 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 and then double click. Right? So uh, all I'm doing is I'm just clicking out like this and double clicking the last one and it adds it to it. Just make sure it overlaps. And I can go the other way too. If I wanted to take something out, um, like, I don't know, this little nublet here. If I hold alt, I can click, click, click. And click, 
and double click and then that will remove that piece okay so that works pretty acceptably um, and I can see down here I need to remove a little so I'm just gonna hold alt and click 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 just making sure I'm going out and around so I can grab what I want okay uh, maybe use the polygonal here so I'm just gonna hold shift so I add to my selection I'm gonna click and drag click there it goes and then right here it's gonna start to, to struggle because it's not so I'm clicking manually and then over here and then I'm just gonna go like that got most of it there okay um, so that's not too bad there's definitely some areas you can see that aren't that great right so I need to do a little bit better job of um, trying to mask out what I want. So I can't really mask it quite yet. Um, now the more, the most fine tuned, the most manual we can go is to manually paint it. And let me show you how to do that. Um, you can hit Q, that's the hotkey, or you can click this button here. It's quick mask mode is what they call it. Okay, so you click on this, and it's going to go. It's going to turn into something that looks like this. And what it is, is that the background, that's uh, that pinkish red color, that is what um, isn't selected and what's color, or what the regular is, is. Now, if you don't like these colors, like let's say the thing you're working on is red, obviously red on red doesn't really help. What you can do is you can double click on this and it will give you the options. You can change the opacity, like maybe make it a little bit stronger. So let's go like 75 so I can see a little bit better um, and then hit OK. And now I'll just click it back on again. And now you can see it's a little bit stronger, a little bit easier to tell. And you can also invert it. Sometimes you might see that the inside's colored, uh, has the color on it, and the outside doesn't. Anyway, so it does that. Now you don't use your selection tool in this. What you do is you use your brush. And just like before, when we were saying we make masks, like the actual masks over here, um, it's the same rules apply. Black will remove, white will add. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get up close to this, okay? And, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my brush. So I have the brush tool here. And then I'm just going to make sure it's a hard brush. Maybe add a little bit off of the softness. Okay. And then I'm going to make this smaller. And I'm going to make sure my flow is all the way up. So make sure your flow and your opacity are all the way up. We'll cover what the brush tools are later on. It'll be a different thing altogether. But okay. And so right now I have black. Okay. So that means it's going to take away. So I'm going to go ahead and try to color in here. A little bit of black but see right here I want to add that back in um, instead of having to go over here and changing the color white or going over here white you can click this and now it'll swap the background and foreground color now white is the color that I'm painting okay and I'm just gonna go around all these edges and basically try to clean it up so you can see in here I got to remove kind of this inner tail part and this part now I can go over there and click that button or it's X. X will swap out your colors. So I'm just gonna hit X. I'm gonna use the bracket keys to the right of my P key. That changes the brush size. And I'm just gonna kind of paint away a little bit of this. And I'm gonna go in here and make this a little bit smaller. Okay. And then let's go over here. Oh, it looks like, see like this was actually, I didn't get rid of that part. Cut, oops that much cut off a little bit of that and X and see if I can add a little bit to this leg here uh, I don't know a little bit there and cut that off I don't know what's going on there um, there's a little bit of spot here that I think is supposed to be removed so I'm just going to take that out and a little bit more of this Half X, a little bit more foot here that I have available to me. And let's go like this. I'm just holding space bars. I'm clicking and dragging. Okay, let's get rid of, oops, X to get back to my black tool. Doop, 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 doop. Let's go ahead and go over here. All right. Now, the nice thing is, even if I don't do like a perfect job, um, because obviously I'm not doing a perfect job. Um, I can still, uh, because we're doing this non-destructively, 
afterwards, like I'm like, oh man, I totally missed the spot. I can go back in and bring things back or take things away because this is going to be a mess. Okay. Good. So now we've got that. Back this up again. So we'll say, imagine I did a good job. I didn't really do that good of a job. I know that. What you do now is you hit Q or you click this back off, whatever works for you. Now that's my selection. Okay. So now we have this selected. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the mask mode or the, the mask. And that's going to turn my selection into a mask. And now only that part's available. Now, if for some reason, like I said, I'm like, oh man, you know, it might be more obvious after we cut it. It's like, oh, you know, um, it looks like this is a little lumpy. I can make, I can click on that part of the picture and then go ahead and hit like, um, uh, make sure I got the paintbrush and I'm using white and I'm painting on this, not on the picture itself, but on the mask. And I can go ahead and, well, I can go like this. I can add that picture back in because it's still there, which is nice. So that gives us um, some flexibility and some strength and things like that um, that allows for a decent amount uh, of, you know, working space and stuff, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to hit B for the select tool. And I'm just going to move him down. Let's get back this thing up. Um, move him around here. And the next thing I want to do is this. So if you look at the original, well, I don't have it up anymore, but... Uh, he's on steps and his trunk is going lower than the steps. I actually need to change that a little bit. So uh, what I need to do is basically adjust um, him. So we can do this a couple ways. Uh, for one, if you go to your transform, uh, free transform, we can go through and we can um, move him. And Oh, let's make sure we're on the picture actually too. Make sure you're not in this thing and that you're actually on that picture. Um, uh, we So see now I, cause this is the one I needed. Uh, but there's um, transforms, you can warp it, and different things here. You can play around with those to see what they do, but really you can do most of what's in here through free transform. So, um, and then you can transform it from there. Uh, but actually what I want to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to take the trunk and just bend it up, okay? So if you need to like bend a picture, there's a tool over here uh, called Puppet Warp. So I'm click on Puppet Warp. And what this does, it's actually stolen from, uh, Adobe After Effects. It was originally made as a, what the name suggests, to, to make puppets. So uh, it allows you to take a picture and you can put like pins in it and then bend the pins, okay? So what it's doing is it tessellates the um, the image, right? So tessellates is just a fancy word of saying it makes it triangles. And then um, you can, uh, so it makes it into a mesh and then you can bend that mesh, okay? So if you want to show the mesh, you can do it here or not, it's up to you. Uh, but what I'm going to do with this on, uh, I'm going to turn it back off. I don't really need it. Uh, I need to put pins in here. So you need to put pins not only where you want it to bend, but also to keep it from bending. So I'm going to go ahead and put one here. See, I actually wiggled a little bit there. I'm going to put one there, 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 there. I don't have any intention of moving any of those. Uh, maybe one here too. I just want to keep it so that when I bend the um, trunk, it doesn't affect these. That's, that's the goal. So I'm going to go ahead and put one here. And we'll do here and here and here. And these are the ones I'm actually going to use. So here what we're going to do. Here. Uh, I'm going to um, I'm gonna push this back. Uh, huh. So uh, this is kind of what I was talking about. So this would have worked better. Hmm. So I might have wanted to do this before. Before we did the other thing. So, um, this was one of my concerns. Right, because, okay, so you can see what's happening is I'm moving the picture. Um, you know what, it might still work. Let's go ahead and try it. So I'm going to move this back a little bit, and then I'm going to pull this up, and then I'm going to pull this up again, and then I'm going to hit enter. And it didn't, uh, unfortunately, it didn't fix the mask. So I'm just going to manually do the mask afterwards to fix it. Uh, so I'm going to select the mask. This will be a good example. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and paint the trunk back in. Like so. Okay. Um, and I'm actually make sure I hit X and I need to cut a little bit of this out too because it looks like it gave me a little bit more than what I wanted. Just because I'm getting like a weird edge on it. Control plus plus. 
So the problem is that obviously when you're using that stuff, you are physically changing the pixels. So this is actually a destructive um, uh, thing. And so it's not working well with my uh, non-destructive mask, if you will. So, but we'll just call that good. Uh, okay, that's good enough. Okay, so there we go. So you can basically flex and bend and twist things um, using uh, that puppet pin tool, which is uh, pretty handy. Um, and if you need to do other things like move a leg a little bit or shift something a little bit, you can totally do it that way. Um, all right, so uh, we've got the elephant in here. The elephant is in the room. Um, let's hit V. I'm just going to move him down here a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to make him bigger too. I'm going to hit Control T. Apply the layers of the canvas group will be turned off temporarily by the transform preview. Okay. Oh, because it used to. Oh, see, it made a smart filter. Oh, there you go. Okay. So, um, yeah, Control T. And then there we go. And I'm just going to make him bigger. So, this is not normally what we want because obviously I'm making it bigger than what the pixels are, but. There we go. Okay. So now we've got him in there. He He's cut in there, and, and the cutting's not terrible. Uh, but obviously, he doesn't feel like he's sitting in the environment. And that's what we're going to fix on the next one.